it is finally time as you saw by the title and the thumbnail it is time for me to build my first lithium ion battery pack so these are 105 amp hours lifepo4 lithium iron phosphate phosphide phos something anyways these are directly from aliexpress a link in the description below i would probably not recommend you get these but at least you know where i got them from so what's so cool about these is you can draw a maximum of 100 amps out of these 100 amp hour cells. Uh, these things weigh 2 kilograms each, which is about 4.4 uh, pounds each. And so the 12 volt 105 amp hour pack will only weigh, uh, you know, four times that. So under 20 pounds worth of a lot of energy. So yeah, when you build these things, you need the cells. Now these are uh, four of them that are going to go in series. So they're going to be a little bit like this. And you can see the positive and the negative terminals here. So it's going to be like main pack positive and then uh, to negative over to here and then negative over to here and then negative over to here and this will be the main pack negative. So yeah, the plan is to have these in a brick like this. It's gonna be fairly small. They're gonna be compressed together. You don't actually need uh, compression, but in order to get the maximum life out of these, you should. And so I will put them under compression. And that brings us to our next point. I designed a rig to hold these cells together. So here are the parts I have designed. They are very much in the prototype phase, so they will not be released yet, but uh, very shortly they will be. But here's the main idea. So you've got these uh, sort of end plates with the nice uh, hexagon patterns, which is pretty cool. And so they sit here, and then you put uh, six spacers, like so. And then you would sit the cell onto here, and then you'd put uh, one of these sort of uh, side brackets and then six of these little bit uh, longer spacers. Oh, sorry, shorter spacers. And then you would build it up sort of like that, spacers, and keep going. And then you slide these threaded rods. These are quarter 20 threaded rods. Uh, so you would slide these in and then you'd be able to bolt them on each side and compress the cells. And so you don't 100% need compression, um, but you do get a little bit more life out of your cells if you do compress them. So that is the point. So yeah, this is all modular. And um, these threaded rods, I just bought in six foot sections and then cut them to the length I would need to make a four, uh, four series pack and um, yeah, so that's going to be pretty cool. But now, when you build a lithium iron phosphate pack, you need another thing, which is a BMS. Let me show you what I've got in mind for that. This video is sponsored by Keysight, makers of high-quality test gear and Keysight University. If you're a professional looking for a solution or a hobbyist like me curious about how the pros do their thing, check out Keysight University. They have a ton of useful information for everyone's skill levels. I've been learning about EV batteries and Keysight's EV battery cell testing use case, where Keysight can provide the hardware and the software needed to test and validate the EV battery packs that will power the EVs of tomorrow. Thank you Keysight for sponsoring this video. So BMS stands for Battery Management System, and that's because lithium ion batteries need a, you know, a charge cutoff over which if you charge higher than the voltage cutoff, um, you can damage the cells and they can potentially catch fire. Now, lithium iron phosphate is quite a bit safer than, let's say, nickel metal cobalt. Um, however, I still don't want to damage them. So you do need something to manage the battery. Also, in the discharge side, you have to cut off the loads at a certain minimum voltage because again, they can get damaged. And also you gotta control the amount of current coming out not to exceed the maximum allowable current for your cells. So I have three examples here. Uh, this here is a JK BMS, which is, um, it comes highly recommended. This thing is actually quite expensive. I can put the price down here for you guys to see. 
but this one can do a pack with four cells in series or and up to eight cells in series and I do want to make an eight cell in series pack and so I'm going to keep this for that so it won't be this one the next option is the JBD the Jabida uh, BMS which uh, is this one here this one is four cells 100 amps maximum um, I really wanted to use this on the first go but there's threads missing in this uh, connector here so I have to cut threads and then clean it all out and make sure it doesn't actually short anything in here so that means um, unless I want to be cutting threads tonight if I even have an M4 or whatever this is tap um, I won't be using this one so I guess I'm going to be using this one which is a Heltec unit and so this one here is a uh, 200 amp maximum discharge my cells can only support um, 100 amps but I think it should be okay I'm not planning on overdrawing it and then I would have to kind of take a look at what goes where but I do see that has a C negative so this is a charging port this is the pack negative that is the negative port and then this is the battery negative. I believe I can put the loads on here. So very likely be using this Heltec BMS. All right, let's see if I can assemble this. You're gonna have to be a little bit patient because my bench top doesn't have much space and I have to do this uh, with a lot of concentration because um, these are live uh, cells that can actually dump a lot of energy. So what I have here is I have threaded rods six of them um, they just go through this with um, a washer on either end and I just laid this down on the desk like so and we're gonna bring the first cell in so that is this one numbered 001 and the positive is gonna go over to my right hand side and I'm just gonna sit this in the holder like so and then I use these long spacers. The uh, tolerances are a bit tight. This is, uh, like I said, this is very much a prototype. So they are not ready to be released. Uh, but you'll let me know how you feel about them. So the, the idea of these spacers is that eventually they're going to, re these spacers will be replaced with accessories. like. You'll be able to hold uh, switches and uh, your BMS and whatever using these as mounting tabs, which uh, I think will be pretty interesting. So next one of these frames goes on. And again, this is the first time I assemble this. I'm bringing you guys along. I think uh, making mistakes is important to show because boy, do I ever make mistakes. All right, so again, these are a bit tight. I did uh, file them down a little bit to get them to fit a little bit better, but they still are quite tight. So these, I actually found they go in better, sort of like this, bottom first, and then, so this is the first time I do this with a threaded rod, but I did have to, try them on when I was designing them. Yeah, these are a bit tight. I think I'd like them a little bit looser. But the idea is to do this uh, relatively toollessly. These cells actually are not even a constant width, so it's a little bit hard to plan for. But there we go. That is on. And they're going to get centered in the end, but not quite yet. So there we go. So that's on. Uh, now we need the short spacers. In the final product, I'm going to try to put the... have all the spacers the same length. Like so. And since the positive is on the right-hand side, I'll bring the second cell in with the positive on the left. So this is indeed cell 002 and the positive is on the right so I'm going to flip it the positive is on the left and again being very careful 
working around metal. The exposed terminals really should be taping up these terminals, but I'm seeing how this works. I am my own beta tester, after all. There we go. That sits down like that. And it, it won't fit perfectly until everything is all uh, sort of tightened up. So there we go. Like so. And these cells have a slight bulge in them. So they're not going to fit perfectly perfectly. And there's a little bit of play here for adjustment. There we go. All right. Next is a second frame. Now, ideally, the tolerances would be loose enough that you can just stack these frames and then put the threaded rod. Since threaded rod is quite grippy. Like that. Get that up over the sticker. Push this down. like so. There we go. I'm going to put six more of the short spacers. There we go. And I'll go get the third cell. This is indeed cell number three. And this one, the positive, needs to stay on the right hand side of your screen. Again, being very careful. See, this one fits in quite nicely there. And then another frame goes in. I specifically chose the purple PLA for this because purple is sort of like my channel color at the moment. And um, it's great, although it does mean that it doesn't contrast well with my workbench. So I'm having a little bit of issues with the sticker. And I don't want it peeled back. Because if it's peeled back, that means that there could be exposed aluminum. I actually had to cut there because I forgot to put an insulator between the cells. So these cells are only using thin sort of heat shrink wrap to insulate from one cell to another. And so I cut these insulators out of um, these uh, binder divider plastics. I just wanted an extra layer of protection in case uh, they rubbed on each other and you know became shorted so i wanted to keep my original first take but i paused the camera and i sort of removed all of the layers and put these insulators in between each cell so no worries it's there now so i think where we're at yeah positive is on this side on the right so we need the last positive on the left and it's starting to get kind of tall so you guys can't see it maybe I'll put it over like this it kind of makes sense doesn't it so very careful not to short this but this is cell 4 and that means positive needs to go over on this side like so and then open these up squeeze that in and then I need the long spacers six of them so if I didn't drop any on the carpet, that means I should have them all. Oops, some of these are still quite tight. And then I need the top, which is right here. Um, these are going to look a little crap because I did not have my first layer settings dialed in. They are dialed in now. And it just means that they're a little bit... Oh, jeez. Doesn't quite fit. Need to uh, open up those tolerances a little bit. Um,
There we go. That should abs absolutely just about do it. And then I have these metal washers to spread the load. And then these nuts. All right, let me sit this up so I can tighten them down. All right, I turned it to the side so you can see that it's not an exact science because these move back and forth. Everything moves. Uh, certain cells will have more or less bulging, but the the point of the spacers is that the, the cells will not be able uh, to slide in between two of these individual pieces. And so uh, basically you can just tighten these. The um, they're a little bit rough on the ends. But here it goes. Uh, so you should be able to just tighten these and they will hold and they will compress the cells together. Just need to make sure that these threaded rods don't spin. Uh, but basically you're, you're gonna go around and uh, squeeze all these cells with a reasonable amount of force. I mean, it can't be too much force because if it's too much force, it's going to uh, crack the 3D prints. But I just want a little bit of holding. And I think it's okay if the threaded rod sticks out more on one side than the other uh, because all that is gonna come out in the wash and I'm probably just going to make um, caps for uh, the ends so I don't uh, cut myself on the threaded rod. So basically just gonna go around and thread these things through. Fortunately, it's not very entertaining because I'm literally just gonna be squeezing the crap out of some cells, bring you back when it's done. All right, this is what we're up to now. So you see there's still a little bit of play after having tightened down the um, threaded rods. It was really scary tightening, tightening these things down because I do have the terminals right over here and you cannot short these terminals. You can cause sparks and uh, fire. Uh, however, these ones you can, they're, they're insulated, but it still goes against the grain. So yeah, anyways, as you can see, these spacers are meant to have some play in them. So that is completely fine. And um, also you can see why this is just still early revision because it's a little bit shaped like a banana. I have to move these bars more downwards, you know, towards the extremities and maybe even add a fourth one. I'm not sure yet, but the point is this will work for, for immediate testing. And so I can go on with the prototyping. Here is the back side and here is the other side. As you can see, a little bit of play, but again, these plates, they, they cannot spread far enough for the cells to fall down, which is the entire point. Let's get on to wiring this thing now. Now to connect this thing up, it takes the most concentration uh, because if you short you know, the wrong terminals, you're gonna create lots of sparks. And so we've got these copper bus bars, uh, tin plated. They're quite heavy, so I do believe they are copper. So here's our main pack positive. Then that goes negative and it needs to jump over to that positive. Hopefully there's no connection between these two. So I'm actually gonna get some pliers ready in case of fireworks. Here it goes. All right, that looks like it went well. I'm gonna put the nuts on it, but I'm not going to put them on tightly, just hand tight because we need to add more connections to this. So it goes from positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative, then negative to positive. I need to drop this onto here. And then positive to negative, negative to positive. And again, be careful not to drop anything. So this is hooked up like so. And let's get a multimeter to confirm that. All right, got the fluke here. I'm gonna touch my main negative and touch the positive, 3.290 volts. And that'll be the same up here too because they are effectively shorted together. 
And then here should give you another cell, yeah, 6.582 volts. And this will be exactly the same, yep. And then we've got another one here, 9.83. This is effectively the same, yep. And then here's the total pack, 13.12 volts. Perfect. All right, to connect the BMS, I have the wire harness here off the BMS and I have crimped on some ring terminals. These are M6 ring terminals. Uh, these call themselves uh, M4, but for whatever reason, M6 fits really tightly on there. I'm pretty sure these are actually M6, you know, M6 by one. Uh, but how it works is uh, this is the main pack negative, so it'll be here. This is cell one positive, which is here. Cell two positive here, cell three positive, which is uh, here, and then cell four positive, which is here. And so this is why I didn't uh, cinch down the nuts yet. And so we can put the main cell negative here. You just got to be very careful. Sometimes um, the wires wiggle in the connector and you couldn't get, you can get a short in that case, but uh, We'll try not to do that. So yeah, this should fit just about right, sort of like that. And then we're going to take the second cell positive right here, number two, this one here. We're going to, or the first cell positive, I should say. And we're going to hook this up. Hopefully, it doesn't short. I mean, it's going to make a lot of arcs and sparks if it does short. So at least it might be entertaining for you guys. And also the other benefit is that these uh, wires are relatively thin. And so if they do short, then, um, you know, they're just going to melt the wire. All right, cell two positive, like so. And then cell three positive. like so and then cell 4 positive like so and we put another nut and then in theory the when I plug this in the Heltec BMS should become active um, or it should release the magic smoke, one of the two. So here goes. I do not see any LEDs. I'm also not sure if it grabs all of its power from the balance leads or if it needs some you know, connections onto this here. So the bad thing about the Heltec is that there is no uh, manual for it, uh, none that I can find at least. So um, let's just see what I can see. Well, I just connected this alligator clip from the main negative to the battery negative terminal on the BMS. So this side is without protection. Um, it's this this terminal, I have to be very careful not to short anything, this terminal here is protected. So this is not protected, this is the raw from the battery negative. This is the protected negative that you pull from. And if I check that with my multimeter, I don't know if you guys can see that down there. So I'll take the main pack positive into the protected output and I get 13. 1, 2 volts, and if I take from the main positive to the main negative, 13.12. So indeed, this BMS is now active and ready for load testing. And so there's a couple things I need to do first. I need to fuse this main negative or the main positive, preferably the main negative, and I need to mount the BMS and cable manage the wires and make some output terminals. But after all that is done, we are going to have a whole bunch of fun. And that's going to be in another video. Thanks for watching.